What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, I'm gonna take you through kind of like a beginner run through of how to use Facebook ads to sell your products. I know when I first started running Facebook ads, it was quite overwhelming. There's so many different options and features and boxes and drop downs. It can be difficult to know which ones kind of apply to you, what they do and how we can use them to your advantage basically. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. We'll start at the very beginning. I'll show you all the different campaign objectives, what they do and how we can use them to your advantage for your business and then we'll go through all the different ad set options as well. I'll show you how to target really high quality audiences, the best placements to use, and basically just take you through absolutely everything there is to know when it comes to using Facebook ads to sell your products. And with that being said, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, please make sure you drop a like on this one so it reaches more people and we can help more people. Don't forget to subscribe as well. I do release three to four videos every single week and let's jump straight into it. So before we get into the actual walkthrough, I want to take you through some very quick bullet points just to kind of illustrate how powerful and how big Facebook ads actually are and how we can utilize them to our advantage. So number one, the largest age demographic on Facebook is currently 25 to 34. There's also 2.8 billion users worldwide and this is actually the biggest out of all the social media platforms. Facebook is the biggest. What's quite interesting to know as well is that 98.3% of those 2.8 billion users are mobile users. So what this means is that everything that we do pretty much on our business needs to be optimized towards the mobile user. Currently the average CPM across all placements on Facebook for all audiences is in and around sort of five and a half dollars. Now me personally, I find it to be almost triple this, somewhere between sort of 10 and 15 pounds, depending on the audience that you're targeting and obviously how successful your ad is as well. With an average CPC according to Social Sprout is 43 cents. Now what you have to again keep in consideration consideration is that this is everybody across Facebook. I find being involved in e-commerce, trying to get somebody interested in a physical product is a bit more expensive. This is give and take in and around about a pound. Vertical videos get the most engagement. In fact, it's 40% higher than the closest competitor, which is actually landscape videos. This for obvious reasons is because the majority of users are on a mobile device and therefore those vertical videos are going to take up more space on their screen. 47% of all Facebook ad revenue comes from US US and Canada. What this means for us then as advertisers on, on Facebook is that these two countries can be the most competitive, especially when it comes to e-commerce or dropshipping specifically. I usually find that of all the people I kind of teach and talk to, the majority of them do indeed target America um, and Canada. And what this can mean is that your CPM will basically be more expensive. The average user clicks 12 ads per month, which was actually a lot higher than I thought. And just to finish off then 1.3 billion people use Facebook Messenger. So when it comes to using this as a placement, it's definitely not to be ignored. So how are Facebook ads actually structured then? Some people find some confusion to this. So before we actually jump into it and go through the walkthrough, it's better to go through it now. At the very top then, if we think of it as kind of like a pyramid, like demonstrated on the screen now, you have the campaign and everything is essentially overseen by the campaign. This is where you set the objective of what you want to achieve, i.e. as e-commerce business owners, we want website conversions. On the campaign level also, we get to choose whether we're going to use a CBO budget, which stands for campaign budget optimization. And essentially what this is, is we're setting a budget for the campaign versus ABO budgets for the people called, which is ad set budget optimization, which is where you get to set the budget at the ad set level. I'll be demonstrating this later on in the video. Within your campaigns, then you have what are called ad sets. Ad sets is essentially where you determine three different things, but ultimately it's who you want to target. So it's the actual audience. So this will be your interests, demographics, locations, the place placements. So this will be whether you want to show it on somebody's desktop, whether you want to show it on their mobile phone, whether it wants to be their news feed, whether it wants to be on the Facebook marketplace, so on and so forth. And we'll also get to decide a schedule too. So when you come a bit more advanced and you know specifically where the most profitable hours of the day are for you, we can switch the budgets over to live time and we can select specific hours of specific days to show our ads. Within our ad sets then we have the actual ad creative itself. Essentially this is what our ad looks like when it's displayed on somebody's device. And when creating these, we typically have three standard options, which are carousel ads, which are ads that you can scroll across to different images, which are really handy for things like catalogs, or if you have, say, different variants to display that you want your customers to see. We have the standard still image, and of course, we have video ads. And so with that being said, then let's jump into our Facebook ad account, and I'll take you through a practical example and run through of all these different things. So here we are in a brand new 
new ad account, your account should look something very similar to this. You may have a couple of messages at the top if it's a brand new ad account asking you to set up. Um, there's usually two steps. Number one is to verify your domain. And then number two is what's called aggregated event measurement. These are two kind of additional steps that every ad account has to take as a result of the iOS 14 rollout. Now there's plenty of videos online, on YouTube, um, on Facebook on how to set these things up and how to complete these tasks. So I'm not gonna include them in this video. If you'd like me to do my take and take you through those, just simply leave a comment down below and I can get those recorded, no problem. But as I mentioned in the intro, my focus for this video is to actually show you how to create Facebook ads and use them to sell your products. So here we are in essentially the home screen of our ad manager. We have our different tabs at the top. So at the moment we're in the campaigns tab at the moment we have ad sets and now we have indeed ads so to start the process from the very beginning as we saw from that ad structure we need to start off by creating a campaign which is as straightforward as hitting the green button so now it's loaded up it's going to give us a few different options um, of the different campaign objectives that we can choose at the very top we have buying type um, typically I always stick to auction so Facebook ads are indeed an auction think of it as like like eBay but for Facebook ads so essentially when you're running an ad you're competing against somebody else who also wants to show their ads to that same person so if I select a particular audience of people and you select that same audience of people our ads will compete against each other to get the impression for our ad to essentially be shown to the person if you'd like more information on how to win that auction so your ads get the best results then do a quick Google search for what's called Facebook ads total value or again leave a comment down below and I can record a video on that topic as well. So sticking with our campaign objectives, there's three main ones in which I use for my business. Number one is conversions campaigns. So this is where we can ask Facebook to track certain events on our website and report them back to our ad manager so we can see essentially what people do on our website. These events, there's five main events we can track. Number one is view content. This is essentially a product page view. Number two is add to cart. This is self-explanatory is when somebody hits the add to cart button. Then we have initiate checkout, which is initiating checkout, essentially clicking that checkout button. Next up, we have add payment information. And then finally, we have the ultimate goal, which is making a purchase. The next campaign objective, which may be of interest for you, is the traffic campaign. So essentially what this is, is we are telling Facebook we want to target people who are most likely to click our ad and go to our website. Now, typically this is kind of an out of ordinary um, strategy to use, but I've had some brilliant results and so have the members inside my clubhouse. If you want more information on that, by the way, check out the links in the video description below. So the strategy I like to use for traffic campaigns, typically I recommend it for people who are on really small and tight budgets because for every sort of four people, five people you reach in a traffic campaign, for the same price you'll only reach one person in say a conversion campaign basically it's a lot cheaper to reach a lot more people and when you get these people onto your website whilst they may not convert at very high percentage versus a say a conversion campaign all that data all those people that come onto your website you can then use that to generate what's called lookalike audiences and lookalike audiences in themselves is a really very powerful strategy to use and can be very lucrative the third and final campaign which will be of interest to you as an e-commerce business owner like myself is the engagement campaign so when you hit engagement you get three different engagement types which have opened up at the bottom here number one is post engagement so we can use this to build up likes comments shares etc on a particular post super quickly for super cheap you can typically achieve an engagement for the cost of like 0.005p it's less than 1p per engagement the next one is the page likes engagement campaign self-explanatory facebook will go out there and target people who are most likely to go to your facebook page and hit the like button now the reason we might use engagement campaigns is for social proof so if you're a brand new business owner watching this video and your ad goes up against say my ad that has say 10,000 reactions, 10,000 likes, hundreds of comments, hundreds of shares, 
and somebody sees those two ads, they see your ad, which is brand new with zero engagement, and they see my ad, which has thousands of engagements, naturally they're gonna trust my ad a lot more. And this is exactly where engagement campaigns come in because you can build up those engagements and social proof a lot faster and a lot cheaper. So because conversion campaigns are probably gonna be the most common one that applies to everybody watching this video, this is the one I'm gonna use as an example, basically. So I've got conversion campaigns selected. Before we click continue, make sure you hit the arrow and it gives you a chance to name your campaign. So this is the typical format in which I like to name my campaigns. It's usually the product name. So in this instance example, I'm going to show you is golf shoes. So I know exactly what the product is. And then also the method of targeting within this campaign, because I like to break things up so I can see exactly how well the traffic is performing, depending on whether it's super cold traffic. So people who have never seen us before versus lookalike traffic versus retargeting traffic. In this example, I'm going to show you starting from square one, which everybody has to start with, um, which is interest targeting, which is cold traffic. So the name of the product followed by the method of targeting. Once you've done this, unless you know exactly who you're going to be targeting in your ad set, leave this blank. We can change this later. And the same case likewise for the ad as well. So just go ahead and click the continue button. So before we complete the campaign setup, it's worth mentioning a couple of different options which are worth knowing. So obviously we have the name at the top, special ad categories. This isn't going to apply to anybody unless you're running ads to do with particular social issues, elections, or politics. Um, we have the campaign details, so auction, which I discussed earlier in the video, and also our campaign objective, which is conversions also. We're gonna ignore A-B testing. This is essentially for split testing different creatives to see which one performs the best. When you get a bit more advanced, then start kind of testing these sorts of things. The one thing worth mentioning in this video, which I mentioned briefly earlier on, is campaign budget optimization, or you'll hear a lot of people calling it CBO for short. To get a proper understanding of how CBO campaign budget optimization works. Here's an illustration from Ad Espresso. If you're new to Facebook, I definitely recommend checking these guys out. There's some definitely some great information on their website. So let's just very quickly then run through exactly what CBO campaign budget optimization is. On the left hand side we have without, so essentially the budgets as we can see here are set at the ad set level. Ad set one $10, ad set two $10, ad set three $10. And then on the right hand side, this is with campaign budget optimization, which is the budget is set at the campaign level of $30. So essentially both campaigns have the same total amount, but one is set at the campaign level and one is set at the ad set level. Now where this makes a difference then is if we have a look at the left hand side, each ad set has had a total of $10 spent on it, whereas on the right hand side, we have one ad set which spent $7, one ad set which spent 18, and another ad set that spent five. And the reason being for this is because setting it at the campaign level gives Facebook the freedom to decide which ad sets to spend the most money on. It won't deliver it equally like the ad set budget optimization does. So let's head back into our ad manager account. I'm gonna leave campaign budget optimization switched off because when I'm running a test, i.e. the very first ad sets and creatives that are going out there, I wanna dedicate an equal amount of budget to each ad set so that each ad set gets a fighting chance basically to, to perform well. If you're running a test of different ad sets against each other and one ad set only gets $2, one ad set gets $50 and another ad set gets $10, then of course it's not a fair test. So me personally, where I see campaign budget optimization comes into play and is advantageous is when you're scaling. When you've already tested ad sets, you know what works and then you can increase the budgets, be quite aggressive and essentially let Facebook get the best results from the best ad set which you've tested in your testing phase. Now, apologies if that's a bit overwhelming. If you want more videos where I kind of go in a bit more deeper and explain myself a bit more and perhaps even take you through a testing strategy versus a CBO strategy, just leave a comment down below and we can get that sorted, no problem. So once you're happy with your campaign settings, go ahead, hit the next steps. So once we've completed the campaign creation, we now get taken the next level down into the ad set creation. This is where we get to decide who we target, where we target and how much we we want to spend targeting them basically. At the top we have the ad set name. I leave this blank until I know exactly what audience it is I'm targeting. I'll show you this on um, a minute or two later on in the video. Conversion event location, our events, everything happens on our website so we can leave this as the default website. Next up we get to choose the conversion event in which we want to optimize for. We have two sections so we have active events and then we have inactive ones. Don't be put off by the yellow exclamation mark. This is basically 
Facebook's way of telling us that this particular event hasn't been triggered on our website yet, which means we may not be able to optimize for it. But to be honest, I completely ignore this and I select purchase anyway, that's our end goal. I have confidence in my products, I have confidence in that ad, and I also have confidence that I can put it in front of the right people. And if that's the case, people are just gonna purchase your product anyway. Let's keep moving down then and we have a dynamic creative option. Essentially what this does is it allows us to create multiple variations so we can select five different kind of visual aspects of the ad, images, videos, etc. We can do the primary text, which is above the ad, we can do the headlines below. Essentially, we give Facebook lots of different variations of the same thing, and it will mix and match them, put them out to different audiences, and essentially then come back and tell us which combinations perform the best. Stick to the basics for now, and then once you get some traction, then you can start experimenting with this AB dynamic creative and split testing. Below this, we have offers. To be honest, I've never seen much success myself using offers. Essentially, what it does is it attaches an offer to your ad, which then allows people to save it to that offers section on Facebook. If you're watching this video, you probably didn't even realize that was a feature of Facebook. Um, most people don't, but one handy thing to it is if you do save the offer, you can set expiry dates and Facebook will send notifications, reminders to those people who have that offer saved to remind them that the offer is indeed going to expire. Like I said though, you can, you can test it yourself, but if I was you, I'd stick to the basics and just leave that switched off for now. In an ideal world, I want somebody to see my ad and then buy the product there and then, rather than save it to then come back to it later. It's much more difficult to get somebody to come back onto your store later on at a later date than it is to actually get them to see the ad, go to your website and buy the product there and then. The next section is budget and schedule. Really important section. This can affect the results of your ads quite dramatically so as a ballpark kind of recommendation as somebody who's dipping their toes into Facebook ads I would take say 20% of your overall budget and use that to kind of dip your toes in so if you have a thousand pounds to start with take 200 pounds spread it across all the different ad sets and audiences you want to test over the course of say five days see the results that come back review those take all the time you need to kind of get to grips with the numbers and essentially get comfortable with what's happening before you then start ramping up your budgets so we have daily budget which is fairly self-explanatory if we set this to 20 pounds this one particular ad set will spend no more than 20 pounds in one single day or tell a lie sometimes it can go up to say 20 pounds and 16 pence another option when you get a bit more advanced is to select lifetime budget and what this does is it opens up this ads sketch scheduling sorry section down here we can hit the edit button click run ads on a schedule and then we can select specific hours of specific days to run our ads in but if you're a beginner watching this video, stick to the basics, stick to daily budgets. Facebook will use its algorithm to split your budget throughout the whole day and essentially get the best results for your money throughout the day. We can choose a start date for our ads as well. So let's say we're going away for a week and we want them to start when we get back. Or what I typically like to do if I am gonna be around is set them for say one or two days time for them to start at midnight. That way the ads just get a full 24 hours to run and Facebook isn't rushing to spend your budget in say like the last three hours of the day. We can set an end date too, so if you've got a really busy schedule and you don't have time to kind of look at your ads every single night and you want to make sure they don't keep running past the point in which you can look at them, you can set an end date and in that case Facebook will just switch them off once that time frame is reached. Now onto the actual audience section and this is where we get to choose the actual physical people we want to target and this section here is what's going to influence these boxes on the right hand side which is our audience definition and also our estimated daily results so the first option we have is what's called custom audiences these are audiences that we've predefined at a previous date so we can create an audience of people essentially a list of people is the easiest way to think about it a list of people who have visited our store a list of people who have commented on our posts a list of people who have made a purchase so on and so forth the possibilities really are endless and it kind of deserves a video on its own but if you're starting from day one with interest targeting then you can ignore this box it's not of interest to you right now we can choose a location of people in which we want to target I'm going to leave this to UK typically I will always stick to the UK with a new business we have age demographics so we can hit edit and select specific kind of ranges of people in which we want to target if you're starting off
off afresh day one with a new product you're not quite sure what age range of people are going to be interested just stick to 18 to 65 plus once you've been running your ads for a few days you can go into the breakdowns and facebook will tell you exactly how many purchases or how many clicks came from each individual age group we have genders again a similar case if you're not quite sure who's going to buy your product to leave it to all genders you can always narrow down at a later date once you've found what's working and then we get into the detailed targeting section box which is arguably the most important thing you can do which is going to influence the results of your facebook ads so in this box we can select as it says a certain demographic of a person we can select certain interests of a person or we can select certain behaviors so there's two options here you can hit browse which i recommend everybody do just to kind of get some ideas of what's possible on facebook if you've never ran ads before so for instance we can go to interests uh, we're looking for people interested in golf so let's go for perhaps hobbies and activities we've got pets which is a popular one for me usually uh, sports and outdoors go for sports and then we have golf here so we can select golf if facebook won't start glitching and let me select it which it has done so essentially right now i'm targeting people who are linked to the interest of golf which is obviously exactly what we want to do if we're going to be selling golf shoes now if you want to get more advanced to this and target higher quality audiences you have to change your way of thinking or you have to at least understand what it means to target an interest if somebody has interactive with a particular post which is linked to golf they they will then be included in that interest and you don't have to like a post on golf on Facebook to actually play golf so if we think about it we're trying to sell golf shoes the only people who are going to be interested in golf shoes are people who play there might be people on Facebook who are say 65 plus and because of health conditions can't play golf but they still love golf they're not going to be buying golf shoes and therefore we don't want to target those so what we can do is narrow our audience down a little bit and focus on those interests which are related specifically to people who play golf and to find these interests it's really easy to do we already have our base interest in there so we can hit the suggestions box and we're going for golf equipment now how this is different versus the golf interest solely is that people who are interested in golf equipment are essentially going to be buying golf equipment and you buy golf equipment so you can play golf and people who play golf are going to have an interest in golf shoes and therefore this would be a really high quality and ideal interest for us to target and in a nutshell essentially that is how I go about finding really high quality audiences for my Facebook ads I did do a video specifically on this topic I could write a whole book about Facebook ads targeting alone if you want a separate video that goes into a lot more detail of what I'm going to cover in this video check out my previous videos on my channel before we move on though there's two extra features in which I want to show you in this section number one is the narrow button so here we can tell Facebook we want to target people with these interests at the top and must also match it's really small so you might miss it but and must also match and then we can put something in here too so if we hit golf and then hit the space button Facebook should kindly sometimes it's a bit glitchy give us some extra interests to target. So let's go for golf ball. And essentially what this is now telling Facebook is we wanna target people who have an interest in golf equipment and must also have an interest in golf ball. So essentially you're really kind of laser focusing down on the specific people in which you want to target. The next thing to illustrate is this detail tagged and expansion box here. Depending on when you created your account, you may have this function, you may not. Essentially what it does is by having it checked, you are giving Facebook permission to go outside of these tags and parameters which you've defined to target people in which it might think will actually convert. To illustrate the effects of this, we have it currently ticked and our estimated audience size due to who we've predefined here, due to the interests we've defined here, is currently 7.8 million to 10 million. If we uncheck this, this number goes down to 2.8 million to 3.9 million. So as you can see, a much smaller and more specific audience of people. For those that are a bit more advanced or watching this video abroad perhaps and you want to target people who speak certain languages or let's say you want to target Spain and sell a product in Spain because you found this brilliant product and nobody's currently selling it in Spain 
but you don't know how to read or write Spanish, then what you can do is come into here and just target certain languages to make sure that when you are selling a product in Spain, you're targeting people who speak English and therefore they're gonna understand your website and understand your Facebook ad. Next up, we also have another super important box, which is the placements. Essentially what this is, is the different places we can display our ad across all the different areas Facebook has access to. So if we hit manual placements, we can see exactly what those are. We have all devices, which gives us an option between mobile and desktop. Typically, I'll always leave both of these ticked just because mobile is so dominant that Facebook will spend the majority of your budget there anyway. We have all the different platforms Facebook has access to to display our ads essentially. So we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Messenger, which we saw earlier on. There's over a billion users of Messenger, so definitely keep this ticked. And of course, we have audience network also, which is typically where you'll get some of your cheapest data back. But in terms of conversions, then my personal experiences are found it not to be very good. My advice and recommendation for a beginner watching this video would be instead of using manual placements, just go for automatic replacements, automatic placements, sorry. Let Facebook go out there, put your ads absolutely everywhere, see where the information, see where the best results come from, and then you can then narrow down and focus and double down on those successful areas. In a second to finish the video off, I'll show you how to go into your breakdowns and find out essentially where all this information is coming back from. One last thing before we move on, which may be of interest to you depending on what the product is within this manual placement section one big advantageous thing you can do is hit this see more options and then you can focus on android devices or apple devices ios devices where this may come in handy is if you're selling a particular phone case no point targeting people who are on android if your case is made for say iphone if you're selling phone chargers or charging docks whatever it may be the option is there should you want to use it to finish off this section of the video then we have organization and delivery. Now, to be honest, you don't need to touch any of this until you get super more advanced and you're spending quite a bit of money and you've got a decent amount of traction. But to kind of quickly go over then essentially what you can control here is the main thing being this attribution setting. So the way Facebook works is it works on data to optimize your ads. And this is the time frame in which you can essentially say to Facebook, Using this time frame, I only want you to use the data that happens within this time frame to optimize my ads essentially. So it says seven days click or one day view. Any data that happens, any actions that happen within these parameters, within seven days of somebody clicking our ad or one day of viewing it will then be considered for optimization. It sounds complicated, but it's kind of like the offside rule for Facebook. Once you understand it, then you'll never forget it and it's crystal clear. But perhaps again, I could do another video on this. Any comments, questions, anything about this video or anything else for that matter, just comment down below. I've got no problem at all. I'll read all comments and I'll respond to every single one. And with that being said, that then covers all the different campaign options and covers all the different ad set options. I'm gonna save the actual ad creative options for a separate video because it deserves its separate video. It's super important that you get the actual ad creative correct. So I do a video specifically dedicated for that one. To wrap the video off then, let's have a look at our breakdowns and I'll show you how to find out which areas, which placements, etc., cetera, are getting the most traction. So here we are then in an active ad account. I've got two different ad sets selected that are currently running and active. We can see this by the fact that the columns are populated. If we want to then break these down and see kind of where the results are coming from, this is what our breakdowns tab is for on the top right hand side. So we can go by delivery, we can select age. So if we do in fact go ahead and do this, we can see Facebook gives us a breakdown for every single age range. So if we take a look at this ad set, at the top we can see if we have a look at the links clicks column for this example that for this particular ad set the age range which was getting the most clicks was 45 to 54 55 to 64 and indeed 65 plus which is evidence that these particular age ranges are the most responsive to this ad and to this product and therefore we can double down on these age ranges we can remove the younger generations focus on these older generations and therefore facebook will spend and focus our budgets on essentially what's working we're doubling down on what's working what we also have access to in the delivery section we have all these different things but one i want to show you which is important if you are using 
using auto placements is the placement breakdown. So again, for this top ad set, if we scroll across, we can see the majority of our link clicks. In fact, it's quite superior in comparison to all the other places is on the Facebook newsfeed on a mobile app. We have this one in second place, which is 14 link clicks, which is on the Facebook feed within the actual video feeds section. And with that being said, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. I've been talking for a while now. There's a lot of information for you to digest. I hope you stuck with me. If you have, I really, really do appreciate it. Please make sure you drop a like on the video if you haven't already, and please make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss any future videos. Any comments about anything, any questions about anything, pop them down below. I will read every single one so I will get back to you. And one final very quick thing before you go. If you are looking for a course which has content similar to this where I take my time, explain everything all the way through from day one as a complete beginner, not just on Facebook, but Shopify, product research, everything you need to do essentially, all the way up to having a fully fledged and functioning e-commerce business on Shopify, please do make sure you check out my Ecom Academy Clubhouse. There'll be a link in the video description down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.